These latest headlines from ABC 15 are sponsored by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorneys. One call, that's all. Hello, I'm Megan Thompson with your afternoon update from ABC 15 Arizona. And we are officially one week out from Election Day and more than a million votes have been cast in Maricopa County. ABC 58 is here to remind you if you haven't returned your early ballot, the time is now. Maricopa County recommends putting your ballot in the mailbox today. While that's not an official postmark deadline, it does give the Postal Service a five to seven day window to get your ballot there. So it reaches the recorder's office by Election Day. Of course, you can also drop it off in person at any polling center on or before November 5th. Ensuring safety at the polls, the U.S. Attorney's Office announcing their assistant attorney, Sean Loki, has been named election officer for Arizona. Elections officers oversee how each district handles complaints and possible threats on Election Day. They're also in constant contact with local law enforcement and the Justice Department. Loki served as election officer in the 2020 election cycle as well. Turning now to an Operation Safe Roads report as red light cameras are returning to Phoenix soon. We told you about the city's plans last week, but what happens once the camera catches someone? ABC 15's Adam Clapp speaking with lawyers about your rights if you get a ticket. A notice your car may have run a red light normally comes in the mail. It looks like a ticket, looks like a real live, you know, ticket, but it's not. Traffic lawyers like Chris Corso say the state has 90 days to formally serve you with the real thing. That's just their way of trying to get you to either pay it, take the class, address it, call the court. But you do have the right to be served. Red light violations also carry extra penalties. Attorney Candy Marufo says drivers should be aware of them before thinking paying the fine makes it all go away. It actually comes with two points on your license. It also comes with traffic survival school, which is an eight hour class that you have to do and pay for. Um, in addition to whatever fine you pay. The state is also responsible to prove you were the driver, which is sometimes difficult if there are obstructions in the picture. Obstructions like a rear view mirror, which could be blocking your face in the picture, making it difficult for the court to prove you were the one driving. Sometimes it isn't even you behind the wheel and someone else was driving your car. So if it wasn't you, you can nominate who it was and then I don't, basically rat somebody out <laughs> and, and tell them this was the, you know, this was the person driving. This can still cause issues for the registered owner, especially if they need a clean driving record to keep their job. They go to court, don't really understand the implications, and they just think that they could just pay a ticket and they're done with it. And next thing they know, their job is suspended, their license is suspended, and they can't just get it back. Even though it's been a few years since Phoenix has had the cameras, several other Valley cities still do. And both lawyers say their firms will answer questions about your red light tickets free of charge. I want everybody to understand their rights. And I don't necessarily need to take a fee to do that. The city is still working to see which intersections they'll be placed at, but the city council wants the cameras operating by fall of 2025. Reporting for Operation Safe Roads, Adam Clef, ABC 15, Arizona. ADOT is taking action with safety in mind if you plan on heading to Rocky Point. The department introducing a new pilot program through the 511 service. It'll include traffic information on Mexico's Federal 8 Highway. That's the highway between Lukeville and Puerto Panasco. The program starts this Thanksgiving. Phoenix police are investigating a three car crash that killed a man and sent three others to the hospital. This happened yesterday afternoon near 40th Street in Choya. Police believe a truck driven by 44 year old John McLaughlin veered into oncoming traffic and ran a red light before hitting a small SUV and a waste management truck. McLaughlin died of his injuries and two men and a boy were taken to the hospital. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. With your most accurate forecast on this Tuesday, I'm meteorologist Jorge Torres. We're not done yet with the winds across the state, including the valleys. We're forecasting breezes throughout mainly the morning with gusts around 30 miles per hour. Northeastern Arizona, the winds a lot stronger today with gusts around 45 miles per hour across mainly the Four Corners area and the Navajo Nation. Here in the valley, those temperatures only staying in the upper 70s, and we're going to stay in the 70s for the next couple of days too, and not just in the valley, but across the lower deserts too, with highs anywhere from 73 in Bullhead City to 74 in Casa Grande and Tucson up in northern Arizona. Of course, the highs much cooler in the mid 40s in Flagstaff and 50s from Heber to Sholo, along with Payson, Prescott and Sedona too. Your seven day forecast showing temperatures back in the 80s by Halloween with overnight lows in the 50s. Chance of rain does return though beginning this weekend and early next week. In Flagstaff, we dry out after today with temperatures slowly warming back up into the mid 50s by Thursday and Friday. But the chance of rain and mountain snow returns this weekend too. 
We will have another update for you tonight. Until then, get the latest news, weather, and traffic at abc15.com, or you can download our free ABC 15 mobile app. These latest headlines from ABC 15 are sponsored by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorneys. One call, that's all.